Welcome boys and girls. Today I'll be showing you how to create a uh, background paper for our Ming Dynasty pottery painting. Um, we're going to be using brush strokes to create some branches for some cherry blossoms and to create the Chinese symbol for the word happiness or fu in Chinese. For this lesson you will need a piece of construction paper that's 12 by 18 inches, a little bit bigger. Some black paint. You can use a tempera paint or acrylic paint that you mix with a little bit of water till it's the consistency of ink. A paintbrush. Some glue. Some tissue paper squares in various pink colors or just one solid pink color and a pencil. So, in our last lesson, we painted our pottery. Even if you're not finished, you can do these next steps. With your pottery, you are going to place your vase so that the bottom is near the bottom of the page and you have plenty of room at the top to create your branches but you're not going to glue it down yet. What you're going to do first is you're going to use a pencil. You're going to just trace the top and you might trace a little bit of the side so that you know where your pottery comes out to and where you can draw your Chinese symbol. Now remove this and place it in a safe place where it can't get black paint on it. Our next step is to take our paint. We're gonna treat our paintbrush like a ballerina. That's always on her tippy toes. Ballerinas don't lay down when they dance. They stand on their toes. So dip your ballerina's toe in the paint. You can see the paint is only on the bristles or the hair of the paintbrush. Start at the top corner of your paper. And you're going to try to pull your brush down in one smooth brush stroke. Okay, that's branch number one. I'm make sure you can see everything. Go back to the top of the page, dip your ballerina's toes again, and do your second branch going from the top of the page to that line where we know the top of the vase will go. Dip your brush again. Don't let it drip. And go to the top of the page and do my third line. I want about five branches, I think. So we'll do number four. Notice that I'm going a little bit diagonally. If I lift my brush very lightly, my line is very thin. If I push down on my brush, my line will be thicker. If my brush is running out of paint, so I'll try to show you that. Put my brush on this side here. Usually you can see if it's getting dry. Yes, there we go. Okay, that means your brush is thirsty. So dip your brush in again and pull your brush down. Now, I'm trying to paint as the Chinese calligraphers, calligraphy artists paint, not lifting my brush over and over again. So you wanna try to make sure that you're doing each branch with just one brush stroke, not lifting your brush a whole bunch of times. You also wanna make sure that your brush is up on its tippy toes and not laying down, otherwise you get really thick branches and you might not be happy with that. It's up to you. Next, I'm going to add some side branches. Oops, I lifted my brush. I was trying to be on my tippy toes. Okay, so I'm creating some branches that come off of my bigger branch, just like this. Because I want it to look natural and realistic and smaller branches usually grow off of the larger branch that we've put in our pottery. 
So you're going to continue just adding branches until you're happy with your work. Now, I was very careful not to cross any branches and you can absolutely cross your branches so that they overlap. This is how it would look in real life. Branches don't just stay in their zone and try not to go in front of one another. So don't be afraid to cross the lines, branch out, pun intended, and continue until you are happy with your work. Next, I'm going to create the symbol for happiness. Our first line that we're going to create is going to be a small line at the top of our character. Just like that. The next line is a line that goes across and down. I'm being careful not to touch where I'm going to glue my pottery. Hmm. What number does that look like? My next line is going to go in the middle and it's going to come straight down. And then I have another small line that comes over there. That's my first part of the character for happiness or food. The next symbol I'm going to do is a short line. Just like that. Then I start a little bit in the middle here. I go up like this. And then I go like this. That's our second part of our symbol. Finally, the bottom of the character. Looks like that. And now you have created the Chinese symbol for happiness. Do not rest your paintbrush in this little cup because it will fall over. So either hold it in your hand or place it on a paper towel until you can clean it up later. Now, I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry. When I come back, we're gonna add our cherry blossoms. Now that my paint is dry, it's time to complete my masterpiece. I'm going to take my Ming pottery and I'm going to glue it down first. When I apply the glue, I don't want to put too much glue down because then my paper will bubble. I want to just use the smallest amount of glue. So I'm going to take my glue bottle. You can take off any dried glue when it's closed and then open it up, make sure that it air can get through. Tilt your glue and just apply some little dots along the edge. You don't want puddles of glue, like I said, because then it will bubble and buckle. And you don't really need a lot of glue in the middle. So I'm just gonna dot along the edge. I don't want it to come out from underneath. And then sometimes I'll actually take it and I'll spread it with the side of the glue bottle or with a piece of paper so that it's a really thin layer of glue that's not going to mess up my paper. Next, turn it over and I carefully place it on the line Hold it down for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now 
I get to add my flowers. And I want my branches to look like they have pink flowers, like the flowers of a cherry blossom. So what I did is I cut some different shades of pink tissue paper into these squares, uh, about an inch and a half by an inch and a half, but it doesn't really matter, small squares. And I'm going to take this square and I'm gonna crumple it up into a little ball. Then I'm gonna use a little bit of my glue and I'm gonna place a, just a drop of glue on the end of each of my branches. So I'm gonna, every time I have the end of a branch, I'm gonna put a drop of glue and then I place this down. And I have finished adding cherry blossoms to the end of all of my branches and the little branches that branched off of my bigger branch. Now look at your artwork. As an artist, is it enough for you? It may be. You may love it just the way it is and then you're done. Or you may feel like you need a little more pink down below. The wonderful thing about cherry blossom branches is blossoms grow on the sides of the branches as well. So it's up to you how many little cherry blossom flowers you want to add. You can add as many as you want. And when you are all finished, then it's time to add your artist's signature.